When building a new Angular application, we start by breaking down an application into separate components. And for each component, we describe its responsibilities. And once we've described the responsibilities, we then describe its inputs and outputs, its public facing interface. So take, for example, this simple example on the screen in front of you. We have a basic application with a header, a sidebar, and a content area. So in Angular, we would implement each of these as their own component. The next stage is for each component to list out the responsibilities and the inputs and outputs. So for instance, with the header component, I would say that its responsibilities are all aspects of authentication, letting the user log in, sign up, and log out. I don't think it has any inputs, but I think it does have an output event. I think the output event is an event called login changed. And it should output that event every time the user's login state changes. So if the user logs in or signs up, it should then emit a login changed event. Or if they log out, it should emit another login changed event. Then we have this sidebar component. So it's got a search box. I would say it's responsible for performing searches. Again, I don't think it's got any inputs, but I think it's got some outputs. I think it has an output of the search term, the search term changed another output event that is fired when a user performs a search. And it outputs perhaps just a string, perhaps just the search term. And then we have the content component. And I think the responsibilities of the content component are just to show, to perform the search, but also show the search results. So I think it has an input, and I think its input is the search term. The search term that we want to filter the results by, or to perform the results with. So this isn't a strategy that's recommended by the Angular team. This is a strategy recommended by me. Listing the inputs and outputs and what area this component is responsible for helps to ensure the components are architected correctly. And the goal for each component is to have a well-defined boundary, a well-defined set of inputs and outputs. So if we were to link up those components with our application's root component, the flow of data between all the inputs and outputs might look something like this. So we have the header component with an output event of login changed. That's pushing the event over to the root component. Again, we have the sidebar and whenever it performs a search, it pushes an event out again to the root component. And then we have the main content area, which has an input event, an input property of search term. So the actual binding of inputs and outputs happens in the template HTML, in the template of our component. So the template for our root component might end up looking something like this. So we have the main header component, login changed whenever that event fires. We then store in our app component, whatever we fire from the login changed event, perhaps a Boolean. And same from the sidebar, we would perhaps send out an event called search term changed, and then again store that on a variable called search term on our app component. And then our content area, we would bind the, its input property of search term to whatever the value of search term is on our app component. So data flow, so all of these inputs and outputs describe how we glue components together. We're linking our components together through these inputs and outputs. And that's why it's important to think of your components first in terms of its responsibilities and what you think it's going to need as an input and what you think it might export as an output. So in summary, architecting an Angular application means understanding that it's just a tree of components. Each component has some inputs and outputs and should have a clear responsibility with respect to the rest of the application. Also, components are composable. So we might go a step further and include a login button component in our header component, but only if we want to reuse the login button component independently of the header component.